This was like, like, whoa, like this whole year God has been blessing. And when, I, when it came through, I was like, I read it kind of wrong. I'm like, oh, I got nominated. You know, I was happy. Then I, I was telling my husband, I was like, oh, I got nominated for Black Girls Rock, but I don't think I won. And, and he read it, he was like, you got nominated. <laughs> so, and I was so humble buy it because a lot of things have been coming to the forefront for me and I'm like wow you know when God is in it he really is in it and you know it's God like for this whole week I'm like been real humble kind of like nervous because I don't I want to represent when people look at me because I come from a background of poverty and all of that I want them to be able to look in the mirror and say you know I can be that girl too I can go back to I can have a family. I can have all of these things. I can break the chain, the generation of curses when they look at me. And I really, truly, I'm my own critic, but I'm an example to my own daughter. I want them, when they see me, want to be proud of me. I don't want them to have to idolize, you know, the Beyonce's and all of them. I want their first idol to be with me. So when young girls talk to me, I really try to show them the way you know, and tell them the truth, you know. So it's an honor, you know, and it means a lot, but my reward goes to my daughters because they rock. They're the reason why I do what I do. It is very humbling. I'm not used to the spotlight. A lot of people may think that I like the spotlight because, you know, I, I'm proud of who I am as an African-American young lady. You know, I'm proud to be a mother. I'm proud to be a wife, I'm proud to be a daughter, I'm proud to be a child of God. So, you know, I'm grateful, I'm extremely grateful, and I can't thank the organization enough for just recognizing the work that we do, that I do every single day, and I can't keep myself doing it. I honestly am so blessed and so thankful. I know when I got the call, I was so, I was so shocked. I never would think that I would be here even coming from my background, um, one of the reasons that Kim Boyle started was because of the bullying in high school and because I went through that rough pouch. Um, years ago, I went through a phase where I tried to commit suicide and I'm very open about it now because being where I am at now and currently in like this present state of being confident, I still deal with my own issues. But I would never think, I would never ever think years ago when those girls were making fun of me and it affected me so much that I would be standing here honored for giving back to the community, for helping girls find their confidence, which is something that I did not have. I didn't have that confidence. I didn't have, you know, that feeling of loving myself, even though I came from a two-parent household. I came from a dad that validated me and he always told me, you're beautiful. That wasn't enough for me. Those girls at high, in high school who were making fun of me was more meant more to me than my dad telling me that I was beautiful, than my mom making sure that, you know, I had everything that I needed. So I am blessed and I'm so thankful and I'm, I'm just honestly at a loss for words because I never, I never would imagine this for myself. I never would think I'm, I would be here in this, in this state at all and feel this great and empowered. So I'm, I'm honored. I'm more than honored. I, I'm literally at a loss of words, which doesn't happen because I love to talk, so <laughs> yeah, I feel so blessed, I feel blessed, definitely. It's, a, it's an awesome feeling. When I got that call, I was shocked. I was really shocked. Um, I'm speechless for the simple fact that people actually recognize my work and see what I'm doing and actually find me as an inspiration. You know, it's, it's still sinking in, you know, when I, I get honored and stuff like that, that people are looking up to me, you know. When being honored, somebody's looking up to me. And I have to keep reminding myself that every single day. Somebody's needing you, you know. And, you know, being honored, that, that shows me that. So, yeah, I'm grateful. Now, Michonne, you are the founder of Tampa Bay Girls Rock. Yes. How are you feeling? Excited. Excited, that's Stoked. right. Me too. <laughs> looking forward to bigger and better. 
It, yes, and it's at USF Oval Theater this year. Tell me about the switch. Yes, we moved to the Marshall Center, uh, Student Marshall Center at the University of South Florida on the Tampa campus. And the theater gives us that evening award show feeling. And so we cannot wait to get into the theater to have this grand event. Because it has been growing. This is the sixth year. Yes, we started 20, 2012 was our first year. Mm -hmm. And so this is our sixth award show. And to see different talent, oh my goodness, to see different uh, educators, to see the ladies, it's just, it's inspiring. And I, I look forward to it every year. So for the, anyone that is not familiar with Tampa Bay Girls Rock, how did this get started? One year, actually I believe it was in 2011, I happened to see BET's Black Girls Rock on uh, TV. And instantly God gave me the idea that we need to have something in Tampa to showcase and to honor black women who have been working tirelessly. And oftentimes they have, they do jobs that are thankless jobs and no one recognizes them or very little recognition for all of their sacrifices and their hard work. And so God allowed us to, to really write vision and he made it happen and is making it happen. I have seen some amazing women come through there and I I was lucky I got to when you one of the first years you did it I sat in on the show and I was like well, I didn't even know this existed. Right. I mean I'm I'm out here and I love Tampa but there was nothing out here highlighting what our women are out here doing in the community. So um, let me ask you what what motivates you? Really the stories. The stories motivate me. The process is women can be nominated. We have a nomination period, and from that, after that nomination period ends, our team gets together and we decide who will be the honoree of the year. And reading these stories, in the stories of, you should choose her because this, 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 and this that they do for the community. That keeps me going because, I mean, as I said, it's just, it's a time, I don't know, it's, it's, it's inspiring, and I can't think of another word besides inspiring because it not only inspires me, but when people are showcased and honored, it inspires the audience and inspires generations that we don't even know. Yeah, the girls is for gifted, influential, renowned ladies showcase. That's it. It, it, it is a showcase. Let me tell you, um, some of the categories, like we just talked to Brianna for Young, Black, and Gifted. What are some of the other categories women, women are honored yes. in? Yes, arts, media, and entertainment, the civic community. Um, this year's civic honoree is a police officer in a school. And what better way to show police officers in a positive light? A yes. black woman police officer, school resource officer, yes. who is inspiring and she won um, resource officer of the year for the entire year for her county. So she's the civic honoree. We honor uh, women in the community, education, business entre entrepreneurs. We honor the religious sector, health and wellness, and as well as an organization that is supporting and promoting black young girls or black women. Wow. Those are honorees this year. Wow. So are there performances too, right? Oh my goodness, the talent is going to be amazing. <laughs> yes. Miss Shalia Fearing, she was on The Voice last year, 2016. She will be with us. We also have a spoken word artist coming and we have a professional dancer who was on the Jacksonville Jaguars. She owns her own um, arts studio mm -hmm. and she promotes black girls as well in the community. So the talent, the entertainment, inspirational. Everything is a night of celebration, a night of inspiration celebrating the brilliance of black women in Tampa Bay. Wow, oh man, I, to see it grow and over, over the years and see like I, Cheyenne, June's yes. Diary, then you've got the Altricia Cook, yes. the Ayla Kay with the, the swimsuit that ended up on Nicki Minaj and now she's everywhere. Yes. They all came through black Tampa Bay yes. Girls Rock. That's right. And I, as a, as a woman in, in Tampa, like I, I just didn't know that we had so much right. talent. I always thought I would try and follow it and support it, but it was Tampa Bay Girls Rock, your event, that, that drew me in. And I remember meeting you. Yes. You were rocking this short, cute crop. Yes. I gold, <laughs> gold, and um, you just blew me away when you came up to me and said, we need to do some interviews. Yes. I said, absolutely. Will you tell me when? And you made contact. So you are helping us to let the world know, not just Tampa, but to let Florida know that we have some black girls who rock in Tampa. Yes. And unless their story is told, unless their story is heard, 
sometimes we would never know. And just by showcasing their story, showcasing their talent, we are affecting generations to come. Michelle.